Hi, this is Manju Raman, an editor from the Middle East, and we will be speaking to Rasika Dugal in a bit. I met her first at the Abu Dhabi Film Festival, where she had come to for the premiere of Kissa, which is directed by Anup Singh and the stars uh, Tiska Chopra and Irfan Khan. It also uh, stars Tilottam Ashom. That is when I met her for the first time. I'll be speaking to her about Loop Case and several other films and web series that she's been uh, working on. So waiting for her to join me and then let's have a lovely chat with the lovely Rasika Dukka. Hi Rasika. Hi. Okay, so tell me about Loot Case. That is uh, something that we'll start with and tell me about your role in it and how excited are you and your star cast and your co-actors and tell me about Loot Case first and then we'll move on to other films as well. Well, uh, in one line, Loot Case is the story about this man and who finds a suitcase full of money and then things spiral from there. Now, anybody who hears this one line would say, oh, we've heard this before or we've probably seen something around, something similar before. But I think Lootcase has a very, very interesting and quirky sense of humor, which I think is the, um, is, is the uh, USP of the film. Mm -hmm. I play Lata, London's wife, and... and um, She's very morally upright and God-fearing, but also very enterprising. Yeah. And uh, like, uh, um, like many middle-class people, aspires to a life which is better than hers currently. And therefore, uh, always wants to do things which would sort of provide um, uh, more to her and her family. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but she's also very righteous. Uh, but how a bag uh, full of money can change a lot in a lot of people. So the story will sort of uh, uh, reveal some of that. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this part, especially because the comic genre, genre is not a space where I've had too much experience in. And I was really looking forward to an opportunity to experiment with something in this space. Um, also have a lip synced song and dance number, which is something that I was like, I didn't know whether it would happen in my career or not. And um, I was not always looking out for it, but I'm so happy that I have had a, had a chance to all, to be a part of an experience like this as well. I, when you speak about lip sync and the song and the dance, I'm reminded of the Kissa uh, scene where you teach Tilotama how to be a woman. And that's yeah, uh, uh, oh, it's such a beautiful poetic scene. And uh, I mean, Anup Singh has brought in so much of, there's so much of anguish and pain in the film, but it is all under the cloak of this beautiful poetic, uh, you know, everything, the cinematography, the music, everything is very, it lessens the pain and makes it a work of art. So that's one film that you'll never forget. I mean, it's again, Irfan, of course, uh, who plays your father-in-law in the film. Very interesting yeah. film. Uh, so tell me about memories associated with Irfan and Dabu Dabi Film Festival. Um, I think uh, uh, I have a lot of lot to be grateful to Irfan for. Um, and I was really hoping to have another opportunity to work with him uh, at a time in my life that, you know, I've had different experiences and sort of come back to work with him again. Uh, but uh, I think my experience of working with him in Kista was absolutely beautiful because uh, he really introduced me to um, two very important things about uh, uh, about the, about being an actor, mm -hmm. and one of them was uh, the uh, he introduced me to the idea that there can be magic between in the space between action and cut. And there can be something which is beyond training. There can be something which is beyond logic. Uh, there can be something which is beyond following instructions, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, and there, there definitely can be something which is beyond uh, efficiency. So, uh, I, uh, and there was a scene in Kissa right before uh, uh, Neely, it's the third, third last scene of the film, mm -hmm. where before Neely, jumps off or falls off the terrace. Mm. Um, there's a scene, there's an interaction between Irfan and her mm. and it starts with him holding my hand and then I get up and there's something that he says that makes a shift within this character and she gets up and she leaves and then she um, jumps from mm. yeah. 
and um, uh, that 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 whole space of the film is in in a very magic realism yeah. um, space. Yeah. And when I read it in the script, I was like, I don't know how to do this. This is very difficult. I don't understand it. How will we work it out? How will we play this? Yeah. And uh, the the thing about working with Anoop is that his uh, instructions are as poetic as the film is. So if you go to Anoop and you say, "Let's tell me what do I have to do," he'll say, "You know, there's this poem," and then he'll fish out a poem and he'll read that out to you. So. You are like okay, I get it, and you're lovely, but I just want to know what to do because I don't know. I'm getting really nervous. <laughs> so I think in a lovely way would uh, uh, keep doing that every time I ask that question, and uh, I just had to learn to calm down and understand that there is, and after I did the scene, I understood that. this could not have happened if i was given a clear in instruction on what to do we would have missed out an opportunity to have a magical moment yeah. and you know we shot that scene once and there was just nothing in it and we shot it a second time and irfan just came one gesture actually it was something that happened on set when we were just sitting next to each other and he held my hand like that and that became a part of the shot mm-hmm. and that transformed everything about that scene and uh, we did about eight takes of that because there were it was technically a difficult scene to execute yeah. because he's saying i stand i turn around i walk there's a track yeah. so every of the technical departments needed to be aligned and it's not something to get easily mm-hmm. and i i can clearly remember that every take came with a different experience mm-hmm. and with a different an experience that i could not have imagined or an experience that i still cannot articulate you know because it was it's beyond all of that it was so magical yeah. and uh, that that experience really made me trust that if two actors um under the vision of a director are ready to give everything to a particular moment mm-hmm. and to care for each other in a particular moment you can create something special and that was a very very important lesson to learn as an actor and irfan gave and anup gave that to me so i can only be eternally grateful the other thing that i learned from him was i was doing this one scene in kissa where uh, you know this this moment up where irfan gets shot after he's uh, potentially tried to rape me and yeah. rape me is anil and um, uh, i so th- uh, irfan and uh, tilothma shots were over and i had this shot of responding to the gunshot and the idea that uh, that cover is actually a woman mm-hmm. uh, so all of the revelations are happening and i was doing a gesture of of picking up my dupatta and and also i had tears in that scene so it was not an easy shot for me to perform mm-hmm. and i i could see that irfan is watching me very intently and there was something about uh, something that he was not agreeing with or not liking and i saw i so i was very aware of what if fan would do because you know you're so much in awe of him that you're always aware of what what that what he's doing or what he's thinking and you're conscious of that and you're seeking his approval and at that time i i was i was much less experienced that i am today so i was doing more of that then and uh, so i was watching him and then i saw that he'd gone and told anoop something and then anoop had come and told me something and i realized that he didn't he didn't agree with he felt that it was doing disservice to my character to put up to hold my dupatta at that moment mm-hmm. i thought it was so professional of him mm-hmm. to go to the director and tell them because i i knew as if there's anything i learned in film school it was that you don't instruct your co-actor mm-hmm. you know you don't direct your co-actor no matter what you think about their performance mm-hmm. but i also felt very warmed about the fact that he cared enough about this to make the effort to go to the director and say hey listen this is what i feel can you look at it and, and you do what you think is right but i feel because he cared that much for my performance he cared that much for that moment on screen he cared that much for the film and he he with that gesture he explained to me that this is a collaboration and that you should be invested in your actors as much as you're invested in yourself in your co-actors as much as you're invested in yourself 
we all miss him and there can be nobody like him uh, over the years and you know the kind of such so a beautiful thing yeah. he left behind and so much for us to keep watching over and over again and you also used to keep uh, looking at actors and just watching him like you said that you watched irfan uh, you did the same with nawaz so tell me about uh, that experience because watching how important is it for an actor to also watch the co star in such close proximity so that you is it a cue or is it something that you also derive out of that performance i don't know how important it is the, the beautiful thing about my profession is that everything can feed into it any of your life experiences yeah. can find their way into into your work yeah. and uh, the challenging bit is uh to constantly have different experiences and to invite those experiences so that you have an opportunity to respond to them or for them to be a bank that you go to every time uh, uh you feel like your resources are depleted you know so uh, uh so this is one way also but i don't know if uh, uh, it's uh, it's important or not it's it's something that i tend to do because i'm curious about how other actors work hmm. because i feel that it's such a personal journey and no one actor's journey is is like the others so i'm very curious about what other actors are doing before shot after cut before action during shot in the time that they're waiting for the scene to be put together so those are my preoccupations so i keep watching them at the risk of looking very <laughs> weird <laughs> <laughs> looking like the talker <laughs> but i i'm very really curious about that so some of my friends are not actors okay. so i don't have access to in that that information like that so i i feel like when i observe people i work with that's a good way to have that information okay tell me about a suitable boy that, the role that you play in uh i play savita who's lata's sister lata is the girl who Uh, we're all looking for a suitable boy for um i think uh, i really enjoyed being savita she has the kind of uh, gentleness that i feel um uh, comes easily to me but is often uh, is, is is something that i fear i'm losing as i live my life more and more so it's a it's also good uh, and i actually you know just the grace and the beauty and the gentleness with with which some women conducted themselves in the 1940s and 50s is something and the sense of calm that i've always been attracted to i always liked that about safia manto also this character it was right that i played in manto and um, uh, so i i liked that about savita a lot and i think she's an interesting foil to lata who's uh, uh, you know and and savita's made decisions which have been uh, in the that fit into tradition as it was understood in the 1950s sorry she doesn't ruffle any feathers yeah but also but i don't think she was disempowered in any way i think she's an example of somebody who was empowered but chose uh, something that was traditional hmm. and i think very often we understand empowerment as breaking tradition and i don't see it like that i see that i see empowerment empowerment is exercising choice yeah. and uh, uh, that no matter what you choose yeah. the ability to make choice is something that i consider as being empowered and i think savita for me embodied that that idea and thought so and of course i was thrilled to be a part of a project which is being directed by meera nair and uh, the thrill to be directed by her and to watch her work as well um, i also enjoyed uh, all those conversations i had with her in between shots off set um, which which ranged from politics to motherhood and it was just such a beautiful experience interacting with her i spoke to vijay varma the other day and then ishan khatter that the yesterday and they all had to say something similar about meera nair saying that she's uh, a good task master and she's very uh, she also makes sure that actors are involved in uh, you know other activities related to the film even if they are not in front of the camera so did that happen with you as well other activities involved in like, like, like prepping or you know doing stuff related to the film but not acting like some, suppose you have a schedule where you're not acting 
but there is you are you are part of the team so there is something related to the film that you will be doing around that time is what they said oh i didn't have an experience like that okay i'm not curious what what did they do that i didn't <laughs> ये क्या है ऐसी कौन सी अपॉर्चुनिटी थी जो मेरी हो गई आई हैव टू टू मेक अ कॉल ईशान राइट अवे फिगर दिस आउट विजय आल्सो सेड द सेम थिंग ही आल्सो हैड थिंग्स टू यू नो शेड्यूल फॉर हिम टू डू व्हिच वाज इफ इट वाज नॉट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द कैमरा देयर वर अदर थिंग्स दैट ही हैड टू डू सो बोथ ऑफ देम सेड द सेम थिंग शी इज अ वेरी गुड टास्क मास्टर बट दे एंजॉयड बीइंग इन दैट टास्क इज व्हाट दे सेड आई थिंक शी वाज i wouldn't possibly describe her as a task master so much i think she's very very spunky which is great to watch yeah. because uh, somebody who's had so much experience in so many years of work when they still have a kind of spirit and enthusiasm which is uh, infectious it's lovely to see that it's something that i aspire to and also um she's also very mischievous <laughs> like she <laughs> and that's what i love about meera she there's something she she turns a scene on its head by introducing some mischief into it so i i'm reading the scene uh, uh, the night before the shoot and i'm i'm thinking to myself uh, what mischief is meera going to put in this that's going to transform it <laughs> so the and that's evident in when you watch her films you know there's one must some musty in it yeah. which i was i was used to wonder ki ye kahan se aata hai now i have some into how that happens <laughs> Tell me about the other things you've done. You've done so many web series, and you know what about Mirzapur two, Delhi Crime two, like Lord Curzon ki Haveli, Darban. There are so many things lined up. So what, tell me about each one of them and your role in them, and the fact that today content is being celebrated. It's a festival of content time, I think, right now. I know, isn't it great? I'm totally enjoying that, and I just hope it lasts and it remains like this. uh that's my that's my current fear but i still want to celebrate this time yeah. um but i keep thinking ki agar what if we go back to formula what what if this this space has uh, has its own formula which yeah. everybody yeah. feels uh, they have to follow so i hope that doesn't happen yeah. uh so far i don't think it has i think there's been much newness and there's been a lot thriving and i've had uh, in that newness i've had an opportunity to be a part of several different kinds of shows and all have been successful in their own way um uh, mirzapur season 2 is uh, something that i'm dubbing for currently and uh, i think it's a, a, a very very um, interesting i think the writers done a very interesting job of introducing new characters in season 2 and taking the existing characters to a very interesting space vis-a-vis these new actors um uh, in season 2 so i'm really looking forward to people watching that i watched to uh, every time i go in dub i dub yesterday and i go i watch some scenes around it just to see what's happening and i think this season is going to be um uh, even better than definitely as good as season 1 but even better so i think the wor- the weight in the that the mirzapur audience has had for a very long time will yeah. be very very good yeah so um, yeah delhi crime season 2 i finished uh, shooting for it's always a very beautiful experience to revisit a character i had that experience with mirzapur and with delhi crime both characters that i was very um, close to uh, in the sense i felt very involved with I think uh, Neeti Singh was a character which helped me relive the kind of idealism that I had in my college days. Um, so it was interesting to see her in season two, uh, because uh, playing the same character again in another season is almost like meeting an old friend. You know, it's like you you basically know what this person is made up of and what their heart wiring is, but their experiences have changed them a little bit. So you need to reacquaint yourself with them. it's yeah. almost like it, the feeling is like meeting an old friend yeah. and uh, uh i actually uh, had shadowed a cop in season 1 okay. uh, of delhi crime so i called her up in the two just to check if you know i could do that again okay. and basically she was in the same position as uh, as the position that neeti singh had been promoted to in the script in season 2 <laughs> So I was like, great! This is meant to be. So and she was very open to me coming in, sort of being a fly on the wall, which is not something that most people would agree to. I mean, I would find it very odd if somebody just came and watched me on set all day. 
yeah. but i went and spent four days with her in chandigarh she posted in chandigarh okay. where she gave she was very kind to me and i was just allowed to sit and watch how she works mm-hmm. and uh, it was just uh, such a beautiful experience i enjoyed that so much i mean i had i felt like i had done character study worth 10 years in those coding <laughs> <laughs> okay lord kurzan ki haveli what is that we were meant to start shooting lord kurzan ki haveli uh, right when i was uh, uh, right after finishing delhi crime and and right before lockdown happened and that time it was being shot in in, in uk mm-hmm. so uk had been far worse than india was at that time so the producers took a very intelligent call for nobody to travel mm-hmm. and shot sure up in about a week after that we were in lockdown as well so uh, i'm glad we didn't go otherwise we would have been stuck okay. and now in, as in when it's uh, safe to shoot and travel the yeah. project is going Uh, start again but we had workshopped for it already there's arjun mathur in the film there's param brato yeah. there's a very lovely theater actor called abhir abrar and uh, we had all workshopped with the director anshuman jha who you might know him as an actor um this is his directorial debut and uh, it was it was so much fun doing that workshop right before uh, workshopping for it i was like you know i don't want to go on straight coming out of one shoot i don't want to put myself in another shoot i was nervous that i would be too fatigued or too tired and you know not really be able to give it my best but the workshop really reenergized me in a very beautiful way i was like wow these actors really have something so let's go and shoot the film so let's see let's see when we can do it fantastic okay you also did a short film called banana bread yes Tell me about that <laughs> during the lockdown you made very good use of the lockdown Yeah, I mean, I I just felt like responding creatively to this very very strange time. Yeah. Um, I wanted to create something light-hearted because uh, I was beginning to feel a sense of gloom about about everything. Yeah. And, uh, and so the best way I knew to to overcome that was to engage myself creatively in something. That's how uh, banana bread happened. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, a lot of people have responded to it with a lot of warmth. Yeah. and uh, it was also my first experience uh, definitely in the way it was shot i mean and i hope all of us don't have that's not the only experience we have in the coming months <laughs> i hope that we can go back to yeah, the live stuff i'm i'm working from office so dubai is opened up i'm sure india should whenever it does yeah i know i'm very envious of a lot of other countries but i think we are still not uh, there I mean, though I have, to, I went out to dub for Mirzapur too, but we have to take a lot of precautions. Bombay is in a very bad state, as you know, right. um, currently. So, uh, yeah. So, and I also co-wrote it with my husband, and this was my first uh, um, uh, time try, uh, trying a hand at writing. Yeah. So many, many firsts on that project. <laughs> okay. Also, Hamid or Hamid, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Hamid. Tell me about it. It's got a lot of emotion in it, and uh, I believe you were very moved with some of the signage that you saw on people protesting. Uh, tell me about that project. Mm, Hamid was, uh, you know, when the film came to me, I actually refused to play the part because I said that uh, um, I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to do justice to. a story about a woman whose husband is um uh, uh disappeared it was that the people of kashmir have um uh, have been represented in different ways in in mainstream media and often not um uh, in a fair way mm-hmm. and i didn't want to uh, do any injustice any more injustice to that narrative yeah. uh, so i had a lot Uh, concerns about that i in fact told the director that you please cast a kashmiri girl mm-hmm. and um, then they uh, then they tried to work it out but i think things didn't work out for them that's when they came back to me and the direct- director said listen i feel you can do this mm-hmm. so uh, so i was like no now i don't have enough time and there's only two weeks and you know i really need to prep for this i don't know how this is going to happen and he was like listen i trust you you can do this so i think uh, his his complete confidence in my ability was something that uh, made me take the plunge 
when I after having yes to it also, and when I went to I actually spent a few days in Badarkot village before I started filming. Uh, I was still very nervous every day, and um, I think I was just looking for an for something which I, I mean, the best way that I can describe is an entry point into Ishrat's world, Ishrat is the character I play. And I felt that that would not happen. I mean, it would, it might never happen. You know, mm -hmm. I can play the character efficiently. Mm -hmm. I can do things which make it all look okay. But I really felt that for a role like this, for a part like this, I would be doing true justice to it only if I find something which connects me to that character and I didn't know where to look. Hmm. So when you don't know where to look, you look everywhere. Right? So you, so you, you I, I sort of read many things, started rereading some books, um, just spending some time with the women of, uh, in Badarkot village. So I would sit with them, I would sit with them, Koi, uh, mujhe dialect tha, to, koi apne, uh, there was this girl who was teaching in the local school, so I would go and sit with him during her classes. And just kind of hang around and see, ki, dekho, pata nahi, kab se kuch, uh, aa jai, and kuch aa jai, there'll be some, some moment like there was Kisra Vait Irfan. And so at that point when I feel truly confused and I feel like kuch nahi ho sakta hai, I learned to trust being there only because of that experience in Kissa, you know, which is why it's so uh, something that I, I value so much. And um, so I was watching this documentary made by Ifat Fatima. It's called Where, every time I forget the name, Where Can I Find My New Crescent Moon? Yeah, yeah Crescent Moon, I remember. And uh, uh, and there's this conversation between two women, between Parveena Ahangar and this other, her friend. Both of them, uh, Parveena Ahangar is this lady who runs this organization called APDP. She's known as the Iron Lady of Kashmir. Uh, APDP is the Association of Parents of Disappeared People, uh, which has done some good work in the valley. And uh, both of them had, uh, uh, their, their sons had gone missing at a very, I think 16 year old or 15 year old sons and they hadn't seen them for more than five years and more than seven years if I'm not mistaken now and uh, uh, there's a conversation between them where they and what's really haunting about this conversation it's very matter of fact you know it's like two people talking about something very and that's what's haunting about something very empty and that's what's haunting about that conversation so I was listening to that conversation and then um, uh, Parveena Ahanga recites a couplet that they, uh, jo, uh, jo nara hota hai, usme, uh, ek nara hai jo unki rallies mein hota hai. Mm -hmm. So she recites that couplet and there's something very haunting about it. So I wrote it down and uh, there was a Kashmiri actor uh, who was playing a smaller part in our uh, uh, film and I was sitting with him in the makeup room one day and I said, you know, can you please explain every... Uh, the meaning of every word because it was in Kashmiri. So he explained it to me, but he also put it to tune. Oh. And there was some, and I recorded it. And there was, that, there was something so beautiful about that mm -hmm. that I felt that was my entry into understanding Ishrat's grief. Yeah. If at all, I can claim to understand it. I can only claim to have experienced something which might even might be close to what people who've had experience like that experience and feel in their lives for, for a moment or for, for, for a couple of scenes. That's all I can claim. I can't claim more than that. Yeah. But uh, it shifted something within me. It did stay with me for a very long time. So yeah, that was my experience with Hamid. Okay. Uh, a maths graduate and the FTII, you know, after maths, uh, art attacks you. You get an art attack and then you move to cinema from complete numbers to complete, uh, you know, maybe not so logical as numbers. Uh, so the shift happened and wh what made that shift? Uh, just a whim actually. Yeah. I mean, I was uh, in a, uh, I had no serious uh, 
desire to be an actor i had done theater while i was studying maths and i knew at that time that i didn't enjoy studying maths <laughs> but i didn't know that i i didn't ever think that acting was going to be a career yeah. um so i had those experiences with acting which i totally enjoyed but i had never really thought of it uh, seriously mm-hmm. or thought that it would be something that i would spend the rest of my life with um and I, I moved on to do things which i found fun i had applied to a course which was which had film as a paper it was a course in social communications media at sophia polytechnic in bombay i did that post graduate course i studied a little bit about film i was very mesmerized by the idea of film yeah. but still i had like connected acting film all of that these were just experiences that i was kuch interesting mila chalo kar liya you know it was that that in my life where you had the courage to follow through on any small whim that you had on a particular day so uh, much like that applying to fti was one of those things that i was doing one day um, i was at that time working as a research assistant on a project on gender and public space okay. and um, with a research organization in bombay mm-hmm. and i was like oh i don't know where my career is going to go from here because i had i i have i have a maths background this uh, to move further in this i need a social science degree so should i be going back and studying not i was a little bored with my work at that point in time because i felt i was good at getting the data together but i didn't know what to make sense of this how to make sense of this data because i didn't have no no formal background in the social sciences so was a bora tha and i was reading the newspaper one day in the office and i saw that fti had restarted their acting course Okay. So I said, "Wow, it sounds like fun." I'd heard of the Film Institute, of course. I was very mesmerized by the idea of the Film Institute, and I said, "Chalo, this sounds like something fun to do. Maybe I should just apply." And exactly, this is exactly how it happened. I applied. The entrance process was a little difficult. So when I got a seat, I was like, "Now I can't say no because they put me through four rounds of a really tough entrance exam, and I actually made it." So now I think maybe I should just join. and even at that point i joined thinking ki chalo 2 saal ka course hai um it will be something new to learn yeah. and dekhenge i didn't realize when i went to fti i realized that class had wanted to be an actor since they were a child and for the last few years they were all making efforts towards getting into fti or uh, or getting into an acting school and really thinking of how they can make a profession out of this and some clearly wanted to be stars Yeah. I was like, "Where am I?" <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, I said, "Oh, unknowingly, I put myself uh, in a space which is very different from me." Hmm. And uh, but about six, seven months into the course, I think I was very, very taken by what um, what this job asked of me, hmm. and I felt it was. going to constantly be something that i would learn from and learn very interesting things from and i i knew then that it was something i i was going to be doing for a very very long time so yeah okay so i'm going to name some actors and you have to tell me um, whatever you think of them in a line we'll start with irfan a word or a line a line irfan the universe nawazuddin humbul nandita das my friend <laughs> adil hussain sexy tiska <laughs> chopra Tiska is like family for me, okay. and uh, when she decides something, she does it. Yeah, because you worked with her in uh, Kissa as well as uh, the other one, uh, Chutney. Chutney. Chutney was what else? Before Kissa, I had worked with her very briefly in a small part uh, in a fi- very lovely film called Ten ML Love. Okay. she had a she had a, an important part i had a very small part i was just starting out at that time so i had known her then but we are very close tiska and i are very close friends so it's all, i mean it's like family i trust her with almost everything and we we discuss a lot and it's it's beyond a professional relationship 
Okay, you also started online cooking classes from friends in Goa. Is is that true? Uh, in in the first half of uh, the lockdown, yes. Now I have OD'd on cooking. I've thrown my hands up in the air and I've said, "Bus ho gaya." Apni yar kuch nahi karo. Okay, tell me the difference uh, between a star and an actor today, with the OTT platform flooding with content, which probably collapses a lot of uh, divides. I don't see them as binaries. I don't see them as mutually exclusive categories. Hmm. I mean, uh, uh, being an actor is is a skill that you have. Being a star is how you get how you are perceived by other people. Hmm. So I don't see, and one person can be both. Yeah. You know, so I don't um, see them as mutually exclusive categories hmm. because they're two different things. Yeah, true. Well. Uh, about loot case if you want to say something uh, about it and tell our audience to go and watch it and why they should watch it i think that uh, uh, the, the humble answer is you should watch it watch it because it has a very quirky sense of humor which i think you will enjoy the not so humble answer is that i have a lip sync song which i have danced to so i am very happy that i have had this experience and i don't think you should miss out on it yeah i don't know if i'll get a chance like this again <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for speaking to me. It was lovely speaking to you, Rasika. And whenever you are in Dubai next, let's catch up and have a one-on-one -on -one interview, which is face to face, not like this. I hope we can travel and meet again soon. Sure, inshallah, do that. Let's hope to meet each other. Soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.